Hey, everyone. Welcome back. This is John from Friends of Your Benefits. Julie, thank you for joining us for part two in our video series on progeny. So Julie, let's say you're an individual or a couple and you're going through some fertility challenges. How would you recommend to an individual to approach either their medical provider or maybe they take a look at their benefits and the benefits that they're currently offered through their insurance isn't great or maybe it's non-existent. How would you tell that patient or couple to kind of go about navigating the healthcare landscape? Yeah, so navigating it, if you do have coverage and contacting, you know, your insurance carrier can be very overwhelming and complex just because of all of the kind of drawbacks with prior authorizations, dollar cap maximums, et cetera. Um, if you're unsure if you have coverage, you can certainly check your internet site, uh, your medical policy, your summary plan design to see what that level of coverage may entail. Um, but if you don't have any coverage, what's really going to initiate that conversation with your HR team or your benefits team is you reaching out to them directly, which can seem scary and intimidating, but really the, the thing that's going to get employers to start evaluating their benefits is when they hear that direct feedback from their employees that there is a need or that the existing benefit is not meeting their unique needs uh, or supporting their specific path to parenthood. So by being bold and brave enough to just come forward and speak to your HR team directly, that is really gonna make their wheels start turning um, and evaluate those policies or consider enhancing those policies, even recommending a company like Progeny directly uh, so they know who to contact. But it can be very overwhelming and stressful if you don't want to reach out directly and identify yourself to your HR team. If you go to progeny.com slash talk to HR, we actually have a form that you can fill out uh, and submit to Progeny where we will reach out to your HR team anonymously on your behalf and say, hey, your employees are reaching out to us, uh, so we wanted to do right by them and start the conversation with you to see if we can do anything to help. Julie, very insightful. So a question for you. So I'd say in this day and age, many employers do offer fertility benefits, right? It's certainly a growing trend, undoubtedly so in the marketplace. But one thing you just touched upon that I just want a little more detail on is how does the progeny approach differ from a traditional insurance carrier? Obviously, progeny is not an insurance carrier, but I'd love to hear from you just on how the progeny approach is different. Yeah, well, so we were created uh, because a bunch of forward thinking HR leaders came to us who were offering that traditional insurance carrier coverage, and they were just absolutely frustrated with that insurance coverage and that benefit policy uh, because they felt that it was inequitable. So typically those policies have a heteronormative diagnosis requirement of infertility, mandating that opposite sex partners must try to conceive for a set period of time. And John, it's 2022. We have non-traditional paths to parenthood that we need to be taking into consideration uh, and supporting. So that automatically excludes LGBTQ, single parents by choice, those who want to preserve their fertility. Progeny addresses all of that. We've removed any barriers to accessing care, ensuring that our solution is supportive and accessible for all and supports all paths to parenthood. They were also frustrated because they felt that their carrier plan did not include the latest advancements in science and technology and was outdated. Uh, it also had a step therapy prior authorization approach, John, that you and I see day in and day out, where it requires less effective treatment prior to allowing you to have access to more effective treatments such as IVF. We don't feel like that's an efficient use of employer healthcare dollars that have been allotted to this benefit. And we also include the latest advancements in science and technology within our benefits, such as genetic screening to ensure embryo viability before a transfer. They also wanted to really put a benefit in place that would help them to attract and retain their top talent, helping them to remain competitive, we're in the great resignation right now. So employers right now are doing everything humanly possible to reevaluate their culture, their benefit plans, and really see how they can support employees both professionally and personally. So this really checks that DEI box and 
work-life balance box and, and shows that they care, which in turn will give them that loyalty and retention from their employee from their employees because you're giving the gift of parenthood. Uh, and then most importantly, they wanted to implement a solution that would really help to mitigate high-risk maternity as well as catastrophic NICU claims as a result of multiple births. The insurance carriers and traditional coverage, they are not monitoring the clinical practices that are taking place to ensure best clinical practices, which is resulting in a higher preponderance of multiples. Progeny has superior clinical oversight over our network of providers to ensure best clinical practices. And that's why we're able to drive such a low multiple birth rate in comparison to conventional carrier coverage, significantly lower uh, miscarriage rate, 26% lower, higher life birth rates, higher single embryo transfers. So in short, John, we were designed to be the polar opposite of a carrier-based benefit. Julie, thank you very much for the info, and we really appreciate the progeny perspective. We're actually going to have Julie back for a follow-up segment in which Julie is going to share with us a progeny success story. Stay tuned. As always, we encourage you to like the video, share, hit the bell, and until next time, thanks for joining.